Here we are in section 2.6, which is graphs of basic functions. But before we get into all that, I want to go over the week. So um, this week is going to be a little bit more intensive than the previous week, only because we have about four extra sections of homework that we'll be doing in this week versus what we did in last week. Um, I did that on purpose because next week, um, you don't have a whole seven days. You know, this unit is going to be due on Sunday, and then the next um, week three is going to be due on Thursday. So you're really only going to have the four days to work on week three. And in week three, um, just to give you an overview, you're going to have to do 4.4, 4.5, and then you're going to have to do the test three review. And then you're going to have to do test three. Then you're going to have to do the final review. And then you're going to have to take the final. So um, these, this is going to be a whole lot to do in four days. Okay, So if you just dedicate one day on working on the review and then the final, one day on working on this, and then one day on that, um, it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility so you still have a day maybe if you have to do something that day or if you want to stretch this out a little bit further or if you want to knock it all out in one or two days that's up to you um, but you will only have from Monday um, 6 1 until Thursday of 6 4 to get all of that done I didn't want to put too much in here and have all four of these sections on this week as well because I, I felt like it was going to be too much and it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to grasp the concepts well enough here if you're trying to work on them too fast to knock this out in four days and then have to go in and try to knock out the final exam. I'm not trying to create too much stress for the final. So that was the reasoning behind adding these three sections to this week. So this week we'll have 160 problems total. Um, which is a little bit more than before, but it's still doable. Now, I do recommend that you actually finish your chapter two homework, you finish your chapter three homework, and then you go take the test. Then, after you've knocked out the test for chapter two and three, go into chapter four. I don't recommend that you try to do all of the homework and then take the test. It's going to create... Um, like a barrier in your mind because you're going to have too much content in one scene. So what you want to do is you want to knock out all the graphing stuff, okay, and then take that graphing test. Then you can start working on the exponentials and the logarithms and a whole new concept, okay? Like this chapter is completely different from that one. So, and the nice thing about chapters that are that way is that if you do horrible on this one, then you kind of have some chance for redemption because the next stuff is completely different. Or if you do super, super well on this, um, just understand that the next section is going to be completely different, right? Okay. And if you're great at shifting your mindset, then it wouldn't be, it won't be a problem. Um, but let's go ahead and continue with this one. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is continuity. It says a function is continuous over an interval of its domain if its hand-drawn graph over that interval can be sketched without lifting the pencil from the paper. If a function is not continuous at a point, then it has a discontinuity there at that point. So here it says describe the intervals of continuity for each function. So if I start on the left and I trace this graph, notice that I never ever ever have to lift my pencil to draw the entire graph. Now you don't have to draw the arrows, that's just telling you that it's gonna keep going this way and this way forever, okay? But even though I would still be able to draw the graph without ever lifting my pencil. So this one is actually continuous on the whole graph. So then all I need to do is find the domain of the whole graph and I will know the interval of continuity. So notice this is going downward but it's also going to the left slightly, forever. This is also going downward, but it's also going to the right, slowly, but forever. 
So how far left does this graph go? Well, if it's going to the left forever, it will eventually go to negative infinity. And how far to the right will it go in x value? Um, if it's going to the right forever, well then eventually it's gonna be going toward positive infinity. Now the next graph, if I start on the left and I trace it, it's the same thing. I can draw the whole thing without ever having to lift my pencil. So this graph will, will be continuous on its entire domain. And because it's going to the left forever, as well as up, and this one's going to the right forever, as well as up, I can find the domain. Domain is left to right. So it's going to the left forever, which means negative infinity, and it's going to the right forever, which means positive infinity. <coughs> Excuse me. Now here's our first function that we're going to get, the first basic function. There are um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, about 6 basic functions, okay? And then we'll use those to graph what are called piecewise functions. Now, the first basic function is an identity function, and it's essentially a linear function. Um, if I put a coefficient in the front, or if I add or subtract a value, you end up getting something that looks like this. And basically all it is, is, is they're all lines. The B will, and later we'll learn, but the B will make the graph go up or down. And then the A will change its slope, so it'll make it more flat or it'll make it more um, steep or it'll even turn it negative and go in this direction instead of that direction, right? So we know that those numbers will affect the graph. And it's the same thing with the other um, functions. These numbers will affect the graphs of those other functions as well. And we'll learn how they affect the graphs um, later on, okay? But for now, we're just introducing the basic function. Like what's the root part of that um, expression, okay, or that, that function? So for here, remember that f of x just means y. So essentially, this means y equals x. So for every x value I choose and I plug it in there, the y value is going to equal the same exact value. And if you plot all these points on the graph, these are the points that you get. Um, they don't show dots, but these points are included here. Um, and then the domain of this, it is going to the left forever and to the right forever. It is also going down forever and up forever. The function is increasing. If I start from the left and I trace, I'm going up for the whole time. So it's increasing on its entire domain. And it is continuous on its entire domain since I can start from the left and then draw it without ever having to lift my pencil. Now, the next function is the squaring function. So again, this is just fancy notation for y. So it would be y equals x squared. So no, when I plug in an x value, I have to square it, and that's where these y values are coming from. And then again, the points are 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 4. Okay. Now the domain, it is going, it is going up, but it's also going slightly to the left. This end is also going up, but slightly to the left, forever. So how far left? From negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, the range is the lowest y value to the highest y value. So how low does this graph go? The lowest it goes here, and that y value is zero. So the lowest y value is zero, and then how far up does it go? Well, it's going up forever in both directions. So it does go to infinity, positive infinity, on the right. Now, f of x squared decreases on the open interval. So if I trace it, it's actually going down, 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 down until it gets to here, which is a turning point. Um, and so what is the interval for this half? It would be from negative infinity to this x value, which is zero. And then it increases on the open interval zero to infinity. So from here, it's going up, 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 up. And what is the interval for this um, region? It'd be from zero, this x value, to the right forever, which is zero to infinity. Is the graph continuous? Yes, even though you have a break in increasing, decreasing intervals, 
if I draw it, I can draw it seamlessly without ever picking up my pencil. So it is continuous on the entire domain. Now, the cubing function is the next one. And so it kind of looks like a little chair, okay? It's curvy, it's not straight or flat, it's curvy. And again, this is fancy notation for y. Um, if I cube each one of these numbers, I end up with these values. So two and eight, there is an arrow there. Um, one and one, zero and zero, one and one, or negative one and one, and negative two and eight. And again, there's an arrow there. So those are the points which make it do this little thing in the middle, okay? Um, but the domain, it does go downward, but it's also going to the left very little by little. This arrow is going upward, but it's also going to the right slightly, but it does do it forever, okay? So if it's going to the left forever, even though it's barely moving to the left as it goes up, if as it goes down, it's barely moving to the left. But if it's doing that forever and ever and ever and ever, it will eventually get to negative infinity, going to the left. Same thing here. As it's going up, it might be barely going to the right, but eventually it will be going to positive infinity. And then how far down does it go? Negative infinity, pretty quickly. And how far up to positive infinity, pretty quickly. Now, the function is increasing. If I start graphing it from the left, it's going up, 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 up the entire time. So it's increasing on its entire domain. It's also continuous since I can trace it without ever having to lift my pencil. So it's continuous on its entire domain. Um, I'll go into the last three and then we'll stop this video, okay. So the square root and cube root functions. So square root is you take all these values and you take the square root. Now you cannot take the square root of a negative number in there because it results in an imaginary, an I, right? You can't graph imaginary numbers on a real plane, okay? These are real numbers, these are real numbers. There's no imaginary numbers in this chart, right? So you can't get imaginary numbers, which is why normally you use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two as your x values. But for a square root, you can't. You have to start with zero, because that's the first number you can take the actual square root of. And then they cleverly chose perfect squares, so that when I did take the square root of them, I didn't get decimals, I just got these values, okay? The domain here though, how far left does it go? It goes here, this is as far left as it goes, there's no arrow there, and that x value is zero. How far right does it go? It does go to the right forever, so that's infinity. Now there is a solid dot there, so you do need to use a bracket when you're doing the domain. When I'm doing the range, it's the lowest value, which is also the lowest y value here is also zero, and it goes up forever, slightly up forever, but forever, so it will eventually go to infinity. If I draw it from the left to the right, it is increasing on the entire domain, and the domain is zero to infinity, but when you're doing intervals of increasing and decreasing, you always have to use what's called an open interval. And what that means is that even if the domain has a bracket, you still have to use a parentheses for increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. Now it is continuous in its domain since I can start from the left and draw it without ever having to lift my pencil. Now, the cube root function. So you can take the cube root of a negative number, so we don't have that limitation here like we do with the square root. However, you do, they did want to use perfect cubes when they were picking their x values so that when we plug them in there, we would get nice values. Sometimes that might not always work for us. We might get decimals. It's okay. We just kind of generally know where they go, plot them on your scratch paper, and then you'll be able to pick the graph that matches, right? Um, so how far left does it go? It goes to negative infinity. How far to the right? positive infinity, it is going downward just little by little, So, but it eventually will go to negative infinity. This one's going up little by little by little, so eventually it'll get to positive infinity. It is increasing if I draw it, it's going up, 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 up the entire way, and I can also draw it without lifting up my pencil, so it is continuous on its entire domain. 
Now the absolute value function. This one is defined as um, the absolute value of x. So this is what the function looks like. That's what you would see, right? Except you might have that a and that b in there later, right? And there might be another number in there too. Um, just warning you in the future. The way you evaluate this is if that number inside is positive, that means it would be greater than zero. So if I was doing like the absolute value of seven, it's just seven and it comes out exactly the same, right? So that's what this is saying. If the X value is positive or if it's equal to zero, whatever's in here is gonna come out exactly the same. But if I were to be doing the absolute value of a negative number, we know that the absolute value of a negative number is a positive number. So if your x value happens to be negative, less than zero, then when it comes out, it's gonna come out the opposite sign as what it was, okay? So that's why we have that little negative there to like counteract that other negative. So two negatives will make it positive, right? Um, so that's how it's defined. And then you pick the same traditional 5x values, you plug them in there, but the negatives will turn positive and the positives will stay positive, right? Now the domain here does go to the left forever and to the right forever, which means negative infinity to infinity. The lowest value, y value is zero, and the highest would be positive infinity. It is solid here, so we should use a bracket when we're doing domain and range. Well, not domain in this case, but range. Um, it does decrease on this side, so from negative infinity to zero, and then it increases on this side, which is zero to positive infinity. It is continuous on its entire domain. I can draw it without ever having to lift my pencil. Okay. Now knowing all of those basic functions, um, you'll be asked to identify your basic functions in your homework, um, but we need to use those to graph what are called um, piecewise functions. So we're going to take everything that we know um, and basically it's just introducing the piecewise functions because we're really not going to do much else than learn to identify the basic functions. Um, but I want to save that for a different um, video. So we'll start doing the piecewise functions in the next video.